Bob Carr here with another episode of the Bob Carr Show. Joining me in the studio today is Jim. Jim, welcome back. How are you doing, sir? Mr. Bob, I'm doing wonderful, brother. Thank you for having me again. Jim, I'm excited today to talk about the billion dollar a year, several billion dollar a year pet industry. So what's happening in the pet industry that you've seen change over the last 10 years? Over the last 10 years, Bob, probably the biggest thing that I saw change was, um, well, there's two things. One of them was the natural food uh, industry went from being a small niche thing to a, a, a global phenomenon. Everybody's doing natural food now, so it's really expanded the food market. Is that better for, for the pets? Uh, it is absolutely it's better for the pets, uh, especially the raw food diet is much more in line with what a dog would eat if they were in the wild. Um, you know, dogs don't get their food from a can, they, uh, they get what they kill, um, which would equate to being raw food, right? So, uh, but it does, uh, interrupt you for a second, but what about a domestic dog that's going from canned food to all of a sudden, I guess there's this, this transition period going to, uh, raw, healthy food. Yeah. If you're going to do a transition, uh, give you an example. So my dog is Soka, for instance, uh, and, and to be clear, raw, raw food is pretty expensive. Um, so I do one raw feeding a day and then uh, I do a, uh, just a very good kibble. Um, not all kibbles are the same. You want to stay away from things. Anything that says byproduct on it, byproduct is what's not fit for human consumption. So we certainly don't want to feed it to our dogs. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in getting into raw, you, you definitely want to do that slowly. Um, and if it was you, for instance, start, reach out to me and, and we can help you do that. Um, gotcha. so the other big thing was COVID, man. COVID, COVID was, was huge. Uh, COVID was huge. Uh, during COVID, all of the shelters were empty, um, which was amazing. Unfortunately, after COVID, we started seeing a lot of dogs with separation anxiety, which really, uh, it went from busy to extremely busy. Because uh, again, during COVID, everyone was home, everyone got a dog, so everyone was getting training. And then when they started going back to work is when they started seeing the problems they were having at home. So what's happened with the, with the shelters now? They're over, overfilled? Uh, they're, no, they're not overfilled, but it's, uh, they're, they're starting to fill back up again. I see that on the news Which is disconcerting, of course. Gotcha. Since we're past COVID, what do you recommend if someone who wants to get the dog for the first time? Should they go to a shelter, get a dog? Maybe there's some good choices there now with people have given up on their pets or should they go to a breeder? What's your suggestion for that? So shelter is always is a great way to go. Um, can, you get, are, can, you, can you get a good dog here without bad behavior? Absolutely. So I, absolutely. I get asked that a lot of times when people when we're talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the shelter is not just made up of dogs that are problematic. A lot of times it's owner surrender, uh, whether they're moving, you know, uh, me personally, there's not really an excuse for getting rid of a dog, but it's not my job to judge others. Sure, but, sure. You, you know, it's uh, uh, there. There's a million reasons why a dog might be in the shelter. Um, so there's nothing wrong with getting a dog out of a shelter? Absolutely not. Some okay. of the best dogs I've worked with over the years, I, I've gotten through a shelter. Uh, Ahsoka is actually only the second dog I've ever owned that came through a breeder. But I needed her for very specific tasks. So early on, she needed to be tested and I needed to know exactly what I was getting or as close to exact as, as, as I could. Um, but but shelter, shelter dogs, uh, you know, all dogs are going to require training. But again, some of the best shelter dog, or some of the best animals you can get are going to come from a shelter. I got gotcha. you. You know, gotcha. and you get an opportunity to save a life for sure. They're they're so overcrowded. When they get too overcrowded, their only option is euthanasia. So, mm. to be able to bring a dog, save a dog is, I mean, it's a good, it's a that's great a good thing. thing, isn't it? Absolutely, good feeling. Absolutely. But there's a, there's merit to getting a dog from a breeder as well. You know, you know what you're getting, especially if you do your research and go through a good breeder. Um, as you know, you, you have Chase, and Chase is a wonderful dog. You had a very specific thing that you were looking for in the dog. So, again, there, there's merit in both. Um, but I would always recommend people check out a shelter first. Jim, I appreciate you coming by today and sharing that great information. Bobby, it's always a pleasure being here, man. And, uh, you know, it's all about the dogs. Anything we can do for them, it's always a, it's, it's always a pleasure. We, we appreciate you having us. Awesome. Awesome, Jim. This wraps up another episode of the Bob Carr Show. Stay tuned next week. We'll have another episode. Until then, we'll see you around.